and we're going to set the type to particle type to glow sphere and we're going to set the sphere amount to 60 and we're going to set the size to about 5 and by default the transfer mode should be add um, feel free to experiment with others if you like but for the sake of following along <laughs> let's just keep it at add and the next thing we're going to do is add the color to our particles before we add all the distortion we're going to add the particle color so we're going to go to quick maps pull down opacity map and we're going to select this uh, mountain like selection here that means towards the edges along the x and y axis it's going to fade out in terms of opacity it's going to be max during most of the time that they're up there or most of the I'm sorry the length and width that they're up there and then towards the edges of the particle plane they're going to fade out now we're gonna select here we're gonna select the map opacity plus color over to radial and we're gonna change the color map to a default here you're free to experiment I mean I think it's pretty self-explanatory you just click on these and do whatever you want but in the tutorial I just use the default blue gradient you can select whichever ones that you want here I'm just going with the blue alright we're gonna pull this up we're gonna pull this up not to confuse you next one we're gonna do is the map number one we're gonna do the mountain type here and let me think yeah let's go ahead here and set the type to yeah we'll keep it at size we'll keep it at size and then we're going to map it over the X values. And that is good there. We're going to pull up the quick maps. Now we're going to go down to disperse and twist. Disperse is very useful um, for adding, you know, chaos to your particles. You can increase the amount. And you'll see that adds just, well, a lot of dispersion amongst the particles. Very handy. But we're going to set that to zero. What we're going to do by default is add a value of four twists. That means four turns. And that looks pretty hot. But that, I think, I, you know, now that I think about it, let's, let's, yeah, let's keep that at four. And we're done. We are done with that. So now begins the fun part. Well, how do you get animation in here? I am an expressions guy because expressions automate my animations for me and they do it along I can have I can use expressions to animate my uh, my animations along with my audio levels uh, I can do it mathematically there's formulas out there you can find them on the internet but we're gonna take care of the hardest one first so what we're gonna do is um you know what I just noticed do you know what I just noticed um we have to set our tutorial clarity level layer to 3d and you're probably asking yourself why do I have two particle layers if you're not then hooray go ahead and delete this bottom particle layer and we're gonna drag our tutorial clarity layer above the particles and all is good sorry about that this is my first uh, After Effects tutorial sorry we're gonna go to so that should be the order just keep that there for a second this should be the order nothing really changed we just changed the tutorial clarity layer to 3d much like the null object and moved it above and deleted our old particle layer so we're gonna pull this down we're gonna go to effects CC smear and this is we're gonna be adding this is where we're gonna be adding that stretch or smear effect that happens uh, along with the music but instead of it happening a hundred percent throughout the whole thing based upon the music we want it to come back in to a value of zero that means we're going to have to be doing a little bit of programming logic and as I said this is the hardest expression that we're going to be doing everything else is one-liners so to add an expression to the two field here we're going to alt click on this alt left click on the stopwatch brings this down and I'm just going to drag this box down so you can follow along see it relatively easily and now you're probably asking well how do we get the value for our audio keyframes well this concept applies to every effect in every form of expressions the quick way to get the value for your audio levels is to just pull down the arrows here effect both channels and here's our slider that I talked about at the beginning with all our values that change in a linear value along the uh, timeline and here's the hard part guys to get the value all we have to do 
is drag, pick whip, and drag to the slider. I dragged this right here, the spiral looking icon. So drag it on down to the slider right here, and it will automatically create a variable called temp and apply the levels from that layer to the value of temp over here. So we're just going to call this X though, and we're going to move on. So I've already stretched through my audio. Uh, it took me about three, you know, trial and error attempts. Just it didn't take long, but you basically just examine your audio levels. The audio for everybody is different, so you're going to have some songs are going to be louder, some songs are going to be quieter, and uh, you need to take that into account. But that's where it gets fun because it adds a whole lot of range for different effects. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Um, if I were to keep it like this and scroll through the timeline, it would never go back to its stationary, you know, default state where it isn't stretched. So I need to say, hey, for me, the value is 9. That's my, uh, that's my range value. So if X is less than 9, basically saying if the audio levels are ever less than 9, we're going to go ahead and keep our default value. Now, how do we say that? Um, uh, what's the best way to explain this? You know what, I'm just going to type it out, and then after I type it out, I'll explain it. So just follow along here. We're going to type left square bracket value, left square bracket zero, right square bracket to close that. Hit a comma, give it a space. Same thing, we're going to be typing value, left square bracket, except we're going to put one in here. And if you've done programming, you won't need an explanation. We're basically dealing with arrays, but uh, I'm going to explain that here in a second. So what's the opposite? We need to grab the opposite. If it's greater than 9, we need to apply a different value or set of values. So we're going to type else, basically saying if x is less than 9, do whatever is in here. If x is greater than 9, which is basically saying the opposite, else, if it's greater than 9, oh, I'm sorry, if it's greater than 9, hit enter, and we're going to say, uh, we're going to give it a random value, and we can do that by typing the wiggle expression. So basically that says wiggle with an open left uh, parentheses. Every 0.2 seconds, you're going to randomly adjust the value of whatever is in here by, let's do it by a thousand. Now time for the explanation. So try to follow along if you haven't had programming logic. Um, the value expression is extremely useful. Uh, what it does is it basically gets the default value. So if I turn this expression off, the default value is what we had, 640, 360. For That's our parameter 1, that's our parameter 2. But you're probably, ask, probably asking, why in here if we do we have a 0 and a 1? Well, in terms of arrays, it's treated like mailboxes. You know, if you've ever gone to a, a mailbox appliance store or something like that, and you have to go get things, they start at 0 and increase in a linear pattern up. So this would be mailbox 0, which applies to technically 1 over here, the first value, 640. And this 1 would technically be the second value. So I hope that makes sense. We're basically going to be saying if it's less than 9, keep the default value for both of those parameters. And the else section, if it's greater than 9, we're going to be applying a random amount every 0.2 seconds to both these parameters, adjusting both of them within a 1,000 positive or a 1,000 negative in the range. So I hope that makes sense. Um, once it's done, you can scroll through it and you can see what it does. You'll see here if I move through things, it adjusts. That means it's, it's greater than 9, stays greater than 9. At this point, my audio levels, yep, my audio level is 6, which is less than 9, therefore they got reset back to uh, their default values. As I said, that was the hardest part and we're done. Hardest part of the whole tutorial. So, uh, let that calm you. Let that calm you. All right, now we're going to be doing the null object expression, and this is going to give us our camera rotation, because remember, our camera is parented to the null object. So we're going to go to transform, and we're going to be messing with the Y rotation as before, just alt left click to open up the box for expressions. And as I said, everything is going to be a one liner from this point on. We're just going to type wiggle, every 0.2 seconds to give us a smooth animation by 1650 and we're done. 